everybody, welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today I wanted to take a quick look at the Edge Router X from Ubiquity Networks. Um, this is their sort of entry level um, router. As you can see here, it's a small little guy. I mean, look at the size of my hand compared to this thing. It's a very small little router. Uh, this shows uh, $49 MSRP on their website, uh, but actually I think I was only able to find it for about $59. So uh, I don't know where the price discrepancy comes in, but 59 bucks is still a pretty good deal for a, a little five port router like this. Now, the interesting thing about the Edge Router X is that it can be powered by either a 12 volt adapter, which is included, or it can be powered by 24 volt passive pa uh, power over ethernet. So you can plug power over ethernet into the first port and actually power up the device. In addition, you can have a PoE out port. This fifth port here is a PoE out. So you can use PoE pass through. You can power it with PoE and you can power one additional PoE device uh, through the, uh, the fifth port there. Uh, as you can see here on the picture, they show power over ethernet in and then PoE pass through. Now, I'm not quite sure exactly how that works or what the extent of the PoE pass through is. Um, I believe that it can only do the PoE pass through if you're powered with the 24 volt PoE. I've also seen that there is a different adapter that you might have to have. Uh, like you might have to actually buy a 24 volt adapter if you wanna plug it into the wall and then use that fifth port for PoE out. I don't know exactly. So I'm gonna try to get to the bottom of that and uh, at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this thing and set it up. I've never actually played with one of these, so it'll be an interesting uh, experiment here. Let me bring the camera down. You can see what I'm doing, move my keyboard out of the way. Such a cute little router. All right, let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so here we go. Inside the box, we've got a quick start guide. I'm assuming that this um, you know, configures at a 192.168.1.x network like all of the Ubiquiti devices, but we'll see. I'll have to dig into that. Here is the Edge Router X itself. So again, a cute little guy. Uh, again, it's just barely bigger than the size of my hand. Uh, what we have here are the five ports up front. This port here is the PoE in, or the first port. And then over here we have the PoE pass-through port. Uh, on the back, we have 12 volt DC, a ground, and then also the uh, the reset switch. Well, here's something interesting. If you look at this, the power and ethernet link lights are on the top of the unit. Huh, that's interesting. I wonder if these LEDs work, but it's got link lights on the very top. Uh, it also does have mounting, uh, four-way mounting brackets. So if you did want to put this on the wall, you can put it on the wall and it has little rubberized feet for when it's sitting on your desk. Okay, so here's the power adapter, very small, simple 12 volt power adapter. Uh, this is a 12 volt and a 0.5 amp power adapter. Nothing else in the box, nothing else in the box. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And let's go ahead and get this thing set up. Okay, so to start, I've got my computer plugged directly into ETH0, and by default, this device is 192.168.1.1. So I've configured my computer as 192.168.1.4, and, uh, and yeah, the link light's only on top. I don't see any link activity on these front uh, network ports, which is interesting. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pull up 192.168.1.1 in a browser. Uh, let's go ahead and add an exception for it the standard ubiquity uh, exception. Let's log in with the default password, should be UBNT and UBNT. Check I agree and log in. All right, so here we have, it looks like the standard edge router software. Uh, I see wizards over here, so I'm gonna try to go there first, but let's take a look at the firmware. I wanna get to the latest firmware first so we're on version 1.6.6. Let's see what is out on the web. And of course, I don't have internet access. <laughs> so, okay, so let me just run through the wizards first. Uh, I'll get it connected up with some internet access and then I will likely 
um, the first thing I'll do is update the firmware. So let's look at our wizards. So here we have load balancing. Use this wizard to set up basic load balancing with two internet connections from different service providers. We've got the WAN plus 2 LAN. So that sets it up so that uh, ETH0 becomes a secondary LAN port running at 192.168.1. Um, ETH1 becomes your internet port using DHCP or static or PPPoE. And then the final three ports, uh, 2, 3, and 4, are a separate network. In this case, it's trying to set it up as 192.168.2.x uh, slash 24. Okay, so I don't want this configuration. Uh, what I'd like to have is this one here, WAN plus 2 LAN 2. And what this does is it sets up ETH0 as my internet port. And then if you check this box, only use one LAN, um, it basically bridges the other four ports into a single network that's 192.168.1.1. So that's what I want. If I wanted two separate LANs, I could do this. And then ETH1 becomes LAN 1 and ETH2 three and four become LAN two. So let's not do that though. I wanna only use one LAN. So I'm gonna set it up so that ETH zero is gonna be my WAN port. And then ETH one, two, three, and four are going to be four bridged LAN ports. Not bridged, they're gonna be four switch ports basically in the 192.168.1.1 network. So let's go ahead and apply that setting. Apply. Um, once you apply that and reboot, Keep in mind that you have to now switch your cable uh, so that you're in the right network. So I'm going to put my computer into ETH1, and then I'm going to take an internet connection, and I'm going to plug the internet connection into ETH0, and that should DHCP an address. Okay, so here we go. We're getting back into the device and logging in with the default username and password. And there we go. Okay, so this has picked up the correct uh, internet, quote unquote internet address, which in this case is just another LAN in my network, 192.168.2. If you had a um, ISP such as Comcast or Charter or someone like that, this would typically be the WAN IP address. And then we can see that ETH1 is connected, uh, ETH234 are not connected, and the IP address resides on switch zero, which is the Ethernet one, two, three, and four interface combined. Okay, so now we should have internet access. Let me see. Ping, 4.2.2.2, and we do have internet access. So let's go back to Ubiquity's page and see if we're on the latest firmware. Uh, okay, so Edge Router X is actually at firmware 1.7.0, so let's go ahead and download the latest firmware. Okay, so the firmware downloads is a tar file. In order to install the firmware, uh, I believe we go to System, and then we want to find Upgrade System Image. So let's go ahead and upload a file. We're going to go to my Downloads directory, and Edge Router 1.7. Here we go. Okay, so in order to change, in order for the changes to take effect, you'll have to reboot your edge router. Go ahead and reboot. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, so we've rebooted and we are now at the version 1.7.0 uh, firmware. Let's see if there's any change to the wizards with this new version. Uh, nope, looks like the same three wizard options, so that's fine. Let's take a quick look around here. Uh, we've got our dashboard, which shows the status of our interfaces. Um, routing tab, let's look at our firewall NAT tab. So this is where if you wanted to open a port, you would open a port. So for instance, we've got our WAN interface at ETH0. We can add a LAN interface. We want to use switch zero as the LAN interface, um, since that's you know going to mean any computer plugged into one of those uh, additional four ports. And we could add a rule. So if we we're going to open up HTTP, for instance, uh, we could say 80 protocol TCP, forward to address uh, 192.168.1.2, whatever our web server is, and then you can leave forward to port blank if it's uh, the same as the original port, and then just go ahead and apply that rule. And that's how you would open up something like port 80. Uh, I'm not gonna do that though. Okay, so let's look at our services. This is where you're gonna find your DHCP server. 
Um, let's take a look at the DHC peer server options. So by default, we've got 192.168.1.0 slash 24 DHCP server with a pool size of 206 addresses. So let's take a look at that, view the details of the DHCP server. And we, here we have the really wacky uh, pool range that uh, Ubiquity likes to use of 1.38 to 1.243. So I always like to go 1.100 to 1.254. The router is fine at 192.168.1.1. DNS 1, I'm going to give it an actual internet DNS. Oops, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And now we can also change our least time if we want, uh, at least time in seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the DHCP server. And close that out. Here's some VPN options, QoS, and here's users. So let's change the password for our administrative user, which is UBNT. We wanna to go to actions, config, uh, and let's actually delete that out and say role admin change password. Let's give it a new password. Confirm the password and save it. And that's about it. Uh, the one other thing that I wanted to do is see what we can power off of this fifth port. So it doesn't look like there are any PoE ports, although I do see PoE off. Let's go ahead and configure this. Actions, PoE, uh, let's put it on pass-through. Okay, you have selected pass-through for PoE output on ETH4. The device plugged into port ETH4 must support pass-through input voltage, otherwise it may be damaged. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. So let's go ahead and save that. And I believe, I'm gonna look this up before I plug anything into it, but I believe the pass-through voltage is 24 volts. Though, I'm using the 12 volt adapter, so maybe that isn't right. I'm gonna do a little research on that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause the video and come right back. Okay, so in looking at the data sheet, it says that the standard model, the ERX, can be powered by an external power adapter or 24 volt passive PoE input. A passive PoE pass-through option is available to support a single AirMax device. Now, if you look at the notes, though, note one says requires 24 volt passive PoE or a 12 watt minimum power adapter, not included. Although, um, I guess it wouldn't be a 12 watt minimum power adapter because uh, wattage equals volts times amperage and it's a 12 volt 0.5 amp adapter. So correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not great on the electrical stuff, but I believe that means that it comes with a six watt power adapter. Um, so I probably can't power anything off of it with the included adapter because it says requires 24 volt passive PoE or a 12 watt minimum power adapter, which is not included. So it must mean something other than the one that is included. Um, and then here we say, check your AirMax device specifications for voltage and water requirements. So let's do a test. I'm gonna plug the, I have here, um, this is a, you know what, I won't even use that one. I'll use my UAP. This is a definitely a 24 volt passive uh, device. Just make sure of that. Uh, this is just a standard UAP uh, from Ubiquity. And this is, yeah, 24 volts, 0.5 amp PoE. So let's plug it in and see if it'll power it right off the bat. Oh, this is plugged into the wrong one. Let's go over here. And let's see if I can get it to fire up. I'm guessing that it won't fire up uh, with just the included power adapter. Oh, I take that back. It's it's starting. Yeah, it's just blinking yellow over and over and over. Oh, there we go. I take that back. It turned green. I don't know if you can see the green ring, but this thing has turned green, which means it's connected out to my Unify controller. All right, well, let's do another test. I'm going to unplug this guy. 
So that was with the included adapter, which let me double check the specs on that. I'm actually going to pull the plug on it. And yeah, it says it's a 12 volt 0.5 amp output. And again, maybe one of you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that wattage is volts times amperage, which should mean that this is a six watt adapter, but this six watt adapter was able to power that um, UAP. So let's try it with our 24 volt uh, power over ethernet. So I'm taking the included adapter and I'm gonna put it aside. And I have here, is this a 24 volt? I want to make sure I get the right one. I don't think this is 24 volt. Uh, I'm going to have to find a 24 volt PoE and I will be right back. Okay, so here we have a 24 volt uh, PoE adapter. This is one of the ones that comes with uh, something like the UAP. Okay, so plug that in there and let's power the Edge Rider X with PoE. All right, so power's on the PoE adapter. The lights are coming on the Edge Router X. Uh, it looks like it's booting up just fine. We'll give it a second and make sure that we can access the interface. Okay, so logging into the interface of the Edge Router X, and it looks like it is back up. Uh, okay, looks good. Let's plug in our UAP, and it should power up just fine at this point, since I'm using 24 volt uh, passive. There we go, it's flashing yellow, and uh, in a second this should turn green. And there we go. I don't know if you can see that, light is green, trap is clean. Okay, so there you have it, this is a Edge Router X, Whoa. being powered by power over ethernet and utilizing the pass-through port to power a separate access point, also powered by power over ethernet. So yeah, pretty cool. I don't know of uh, a ton of applications for this router. I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, so I bought one to try it out and uh, it looks like it works great. So um, I'm not sure performance wise how it stacks up against the standard edge router series if it's a little bit less robust or not. But uh, I'm sure it's certainly going to be more robust than your standard Soho, um, you know, sort of all in one Wi-Fi router switch combo units that are out there. And, uh, and yeah, for 59 bucks or 49 bucks, as the Ubiquiti website states, uh, it's really not a bad little router. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, look at the Edge Router X. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.